Right then, due to quite a lot of requests, we're going to do a video on how to tune a 306D turbo. Although this video can be used for a lot of other cars which use this particular engine, most Citroëns and Peugeot diesels, among others. <coughs> right, first thing you need to work out is what turbo you're running, because they put two different kinds, well actually they put three different kinds of turbo on, but the later ones, if you've got an earlier one, most likely you've probably got a KKK or a T2. And the way you can work that out is get underneath your car and look up behind the engine block and you'll either see this bit here or an adjustable wastegate arm. If you've got the adjustable wastegate arm that means you've got a Garrett T2. If you've got the KKK then you've got this funny bit, it's called an internal actuator and that's that bit there. You pay, may possibly have a slightly different version of this if you've got a later 306 which is your Garrett GT15. It looks exactly the same, it's just a different turbo with smaller in internals. Actually a better turbo. Right. Then the other bit you need to work out is what pump you're running. You've either got a Lucas set up, your Lucas pump looks like that from above. The majority of the later 306s are running your Lucas pump, or if you've got a very early 306, you may be running a Bosch pump which has got the upright boost compensator on the top. Just a sort of a brief overview to like turbo diesel tuning, the basic overview is more fuel and more boost equals more power. This isn't obviously not stupid, there's a limit to this because too much boost is just going to mean too much charge temperature and then it won't go that quick. So basically you want to be looking at increasing fuel and your turbo boost by doing your fuel pump and your turbo which we'll show you in this video. Yeah, <coughs> fuel pump settings, well the more fuel you give it the more power you have but obviously the, the less miles per gallon your car is going to be doing and you're going to be chucking out black smoke which you don't want to be doing on public roads. So you want to try and get the settings just right so that you've got a decent power stroke economy ratio. <coughs> Before you go tuning, you probably want, you might want to put your boost grade on and just make sure you're running 12, 13 PSI because it's quite possible you could have got boost leaks on the standard system. So before you start tuning, you certainly want to sort this out. Common places for it to leak on a 306 is on your hose coming onto the front of your intercooler. That you might want to tighten down your Jubilee. No. On the back where it joins into your inlet manifold here, you've got a D-seal underneath here. That can often leak, so you want to just have a look around make sure there's no obvious leaks. Because if you're leaking boost, then you're never going to get the performance you're looking for. Alright, I'd better say before, um, before I get started, if you do plan on making this modification to your car, you want to be informing your insurance company, because obviously you're going to be incre increasing the power and performance of the car. So you need to speak to your insurance company and let them know what modifications you've done so that you are still insured to drive it, otherwise you will not be insured to be driving the car. Okay, the basic concept of tuning it is to increase your fueling from your pump and to increase your boost pressure from the turbo. You look, well, by standards, you're probably producing 12 to 13 psi, roughly. They're not all the same, but that's probably what you want to be looking at. When you want to start tuning it, you're probably looking at 18 psi at the most. Anything more than that, and the heat soak will just slow you down, because with your standard top mount intercooler, airflow isn't the best. So, 18 psi is what you're looking for. So before you start tuning anything, the first thing you want to be doing is put a boost gauge on the car, because obviously you can't read the pressure otherwise and you're going to blow it out. So the place to put this is with a little T-piece, like that, which then feeds through the boost hose, through the dash, into the car, or wherever you like with a boost gauge. Now the place you want to be connecting this to, on your Lucas pump, you've got a pipe here that comes from the bottom of the pump, or if you've got a Bosch pump, it's the pipe that comes off the top of the pump here, but to easily find it, you just look at your intercooler, and you've got a pipe coming off the bottom, that's your boost compensator pipe, that basically tells your pump what boost you're running, and it adds extra fuel, so that when you're on boost, it's injecting more fuel. You want to put the T-piece on this pipe, and that will take, tell you what boost you're running at the time. Okay, I'll start with the fueling side of things. Basically, you want to be increasing your fueling, because the more fuel, the more boost the car can make. But the boost is, well, once you've come up against what's called the wastegate, that'll be your max max boost until you adjust the wastegate. So this arm here, stroke that bolt there, is what adjusts your wastegate. So the tighter this arm is, the more boost it'll make before the wastegate releases the air pressure out of the turbo. So, but would, what I do is adjust the pump first, and then bring your wastegate down to 18 psi, and that seems an effective way of tuning. So, depending on what pump you've got, is adjusting your max, well, adjusting your fueling is in two different ways. You've got your max fuel, which is your fueling across the whole rev range, and you've got your boost compensator. The boost compensator is only used when the car's on boost. So, 
you've basically got your fuel coming from your max fuel, and then when it comes on boost, the boost goes down your boost compensator and it injects extra fuel. The boost compensator fueling doesn't actually make a huge difference, to be honest. The max fuel is what you'll notice massively. Okay, so if you get a pair of pliers and put them on top of this cap and give them a up right and left like that, it will come off. And to see, you see a lock bolt with the bolt inside. All you want to do, you're looking at about one, one and a half to two and a half turns for your max fuel, for your sorry, for the boost compensator. So if you put a um, spanner on the lock nut around the outside, loosen that, then you want to turn it anti-clockwise. Start with one turn, and then you can always increase it a bit more if you feel you need a bit more fuel. When you finish, don't forget to tighten the lock bolt, otherwise it will vibrate loose. Now that's the easy part. Now the max fuel underneath this cap. So the first thing you need to do is take this cap off. Now a common thing people do is try and smack it with a hammer, chiselling underneath here. The way to do it is to simply have a chisel coming in at it, because this whole cap unscrews out of the thing. So you want a chisel in here, just to slacken it off, and once it's slackened off, it'll undo. Um, then inside, you'll find a little hole with an allen bolt, which I'll now show you. It's quite easy, don't go forcing it, it should undo fairly simply. Just undo it like this. Now when you're doing this, on your car, when you, this cap comes out, a lot of diesel is going to pour everywhere because this pump is full of diesel. So you want to probably put a plastic bag over your alternator just to protect it from the diesel. And undo this bolt all the way and it'll come out. Now you get diesel flooding everywhere if this was on your car. Now inside, <coughs> there's a hole just there. Now inside that hole, when you turn the um, cam pulley, now obviously to turn this on your car, the best way to do it is put your car in fifth gear and take the handbrake off. And just rock your car forward and back and this whole thing will turn then. Now you want to make sure the ignition's off, obviously, when you're doing that. Inside this hole, you want to keep rocking your car slowly, like so, into a little Allen bolt key. You probably can't see because it's dark. But right inside the hole now, I've just lined up as an Allen bolt lined up. That bolt is a 2.5mm Allen key. Sorry, a 4mm Allen key. You want to insert an Allen key into the hole, like so. Never use a ball type Allen key because if the end snaps off inside the pump, you've basically got a very expensive mess. You want to give the pump roughly 20 to 40 degrees clockwise if you start with about 20 degrees. The way to measure this is to basically how much smoke you're producing out the back of the car. So if you turn it 20 degrees and drive up the road, you want to drive it, don't just rev it because you won't notice if you're just revving it. And then if you think if you still need a bit more fuel, then just keep doing it until you've got a little bit of black smoke, then turn it back a bit. And that's probably about right. Now obviously once you've taken all this diesels come out of there, you've aired this fuel injection system up. So you want to replace your cap back onto there, like so, then once it pumps back on the car, using the grenade as people call it, but your fuel primer pump, you want to keep squeezing that until it goes hard, that will then fill your fuel pump up with fuel again, then you should be able to start your car, you might find it's a bit harder to start than normal because a bit of air has gone in, but it will come right after time. Also I did mention earlier that you might be wanting a small mirror, the reason for this is when the loosest pump is in the car, it's located here, and that little black bung is down here. And when the radiator is here, it's very difficult to see inside if you're actually lining up the allen bolt. So by just positioning a little mirror here, you can look at the mirror, which will then look in the hole, and then you can see when the allen key is lined up. I find that quite helpful. Right, now if you've got your Bosch pump, the fueling is even simpler than on the Lucas. That's your boost compensator. You've got a Torx bit in the middle and the lock nut. Exactly the same as the um, Lucas pump. Slacken that one, turn that 1.5 to 2.5 turns, and tighten it up again. Now your max fuel, instead of being inside the pump, is conveniently just on the back here. You, there's a warranty seal that's on here normally. You want It's a metal warranty seal, so you're going to have to use a decent pair of pliers and just keep prying it and it'll come off the end. And you, you've got a 13mm lock nut in there, and then you've just got a screwdriver end on the end. So if you, and this one here you've got to screw in for more fuel. So you probably want to go for a quarter of, of, quarter of a turn to a whole turn. It totally depends really what it's set to you before. So just keep increasing it until you start seeing a bit of black smoke. Then just decrease it very slightly. That's probably about right. Right, now we're going to talk about your turbo.